Hello everyone and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are in Chapter 3 Analytical Techniques and continuing with the Part 2 of 3.3 Dynamic Analysis. In the previous tutorial we understood a little more on the basics of what exactly dynamic analysis is all about and in this tutorial we're going to understand more beyond that. The next topic which we are covering as a part of this is detecting wild pointers, which is another important aspect to improve the non-functional parameters of an application or if you talk about the quality characteristics in order to improvise the performance and responsiveness of a product or application. First of all, let's understand what exactly wild pointer is all about. Now when you talk about a wild pointer, the word wild seems to be which is not under control or probably may harm you or it's just that it's against the rules and regulation and you call it as a wild one. And a wild pointer is something uh, within a program, a pointer that are no longer accurate or must not be used. So probably with the best example to understand that is uh, maybe you use a pointer which was uh, pointing on a particular object which you use on a page one of an application and uh, the user has to enter certain data in order to uh, fill in that information to carry forward the actions further. But at any point of time, you think that when you move to module two, module three, module four, and this pointer or this object information is no longer required when you move to module three, module four, and so on, then at this point of time, this pointer is not pointing to any of the object on the page and thus may not be really required to be used or may not be helping you by any means, but it is in turn allocating certain memory during the activities. And that can be uh, quite, uh, you know, you know, harmful in terms of uh, reducing or degrading your performance because that's just one. What if you have few other wild pointers like that that can impact a lot when it comes to the responsiveness of the applications and the product interaction. So that's where the wild pointers are very important to be detected and make sure that you have addressed them in such a way in your program that once you move beyond module two, this pointer should be killed so that it should not be further allocating any kind of memory when the user have finally moved to module three. But make sure that this pointer will no longer be required if a person has moved to or moved beyond that cutoff point. That's the most important thing which you should be taking care of while detecting or working with wild pointers. But anyways, when you talk in more detail about this, when a program uses a wild pointer, a variety of consequences may occur, including the following. The program may, may perform as expected. This may be the case where the wild pointer access memories which is currently not used by the program and is normally free and contains reasonable value sometime. The program may crash, that is another thing. One is that it can help you, it can do those, you know, let you do the performance of the activity or allow you to do that, but sometimes the program may crash. In this case, the wild pointer may have caused a part of the memory to be incorrectly used, which is critical to the running of the program, like the operating system. The program does not function correctly because objects required by the program cannot be accessed. Under these conditions, the program may continue to function, although an error message may be issued. Additionally, data in the memory location may be corrupted by the pointer and incorrect value subsequently is used beyond that. So what if it's not having a proper and accurate value being carried forward and then still trying to use that? It is actually like a wild pointer. It is not responding to you with the accurate value what you must be looking at. So keeping all these things in mind, you must be having a proper approach to identify these wild pointers and try to understand if that is really required for you to retain those values or release them. Note that any changes made by the programmer's memory usage may trigger any of the four consequences listed above. This is particularly critical where initially the program performs as expected despite the use of wild pointers and then crashes unexpectedly following a software change. So being a technical test analyst, you must take care of these wild pointers to be under control. The next thing what we are talking about in this segment or in dynamic analysis or this chapter is analysis of performance efficiency. When you talk about dynamic analysis, it's not just useful for detecting failures, but with the dynamic analysis of program performance 
tools help identify performance efficiency, bottlenecks, and generate a wide range of performance metrics which can be used by the developer to fine-tune the system performance. So when you talk about a performance scenario, it is just not about like what if a system crashes. But sometimes we do measure uh, many such parameters like uh, total throughput or hits per second, CPU utilization, memory utilization, and the processor utilization, and many such things like that. Now, it might be that you may have an SLA based on these parameters that it should be less than or equal to that, or throughput should be greater than or equal to that. Then you may review these things or these kind of information while uh, organizing a performance scenario. So it's just not about making sure that the product fails and it is not stable. Sometimes response time, hits per second, and all this can also be reviewed very well in order to fine tune and make it better. So that what if the user count increases further, then this is still going to be a perfect part of the module in order to give you the best results at given scenarios. For example, information can be provided about the number of times a module is called during execution. Modules which are frequently called would be likely candidates for performance enhancements because of course these modules will add a lot of value in order to give you uh, enhancement on the performance. By merging the information about the dynamic behavior of the software with information which you obtained from the call graphs during static analysis, the tester can also identify the modules which might be candidates for detailed and extensive testing. Now you do understand that not only developers, but even being a tester, you can recognize the areas, the part of the application which requires more attention or has a criticality involved. Thus, testers can recognize those things by having certain ideas with call graphs and other things, and then you can determine what needs to be done and how you can orient your testing efforts towards that. Dynamic analysis of performing program performance is often done while conducting system tests, although it may also be done when testing a single subsystem in earlier phases of testing using test harnesses. So I think we know this from foundation already that non-functional testing should not wait for system testing to happen, but generally once the system is ready or system testing is being performed, a lot of non-functional parameters can be addressed. But Yet, we have to agree to that not everything actually starts right from the system. But a lot of such small things like writing even a simple program which responds well and uh, releases the unoccupied or unutilized memories from the RAM should be designed right from the unit level itself. And things can be even implemented much earlier like right the way you define your designing and architects. So that's where the non-functional parameters can be considered in order to uh, assist your enhancement and upgradation of the performance and non-functional testing. So that's all from this particular technique team, this particular chapter, this particular topic that is analytical techniques. We'll be getting back to you with sample questions on this chapter very next that is tomorrow. So stay tuned for that and should you have anything else beyond this feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team, and happy learning.